Okay, today is Geometry re Algebra Review Day 1. In your notes, we want to jump right in and talk about the exponent rules. Today our topic is exponents, so you have to understand the exponent rules and be able to apply them. These should be somewhat familiar to you. This is designed to be a quick review. So let's go through the important rules that you need to know. First one is product of powers property. So if the base is written more than once, that's the big number, and you're multiplying, then you add the exponents. And we'll go over examples of this too. So you keep that base and you add those exponents. Again, if the base is written more than once, you add the exponents. The next one, a power of a power. So if you have a base that's taken to two powers, you multiply those powers. So again, it's a to the m power to the nth power. If the base is only written once, power of a power, you multiply the exponents. Look at the difference between what product of powers looks like when you add the exponents versus power of a power where you multiply the exponents. Power of a product. So you have two bases inside the parentheses taken to a power. Those parentheses mean that that power applies to both of those bases. It's almost like a distributive kind of problem. That M gets given to both of those bases. So you would rewrite it this way, A to the M times B to the M. Zero exponent rule, something very simple to remember, any number to the zero power is always one. This is the one that is a little bit tricky. If you have a base to a negative exponent, to get rid of that negative, you put it in the opposite location. So what I mean by that is this A is in the numerator position. To make that negative go away, it goes into the negative position, or the denominator position. And it also goes the opposite way. If I had a negative exponent in the denominator to make it go away, I would move that base and that exponent to the numerator position. So to make the negative of the exponent go away, it goes in the opposite location. So you know you're done and you know that it's completely simplified when you have no parentheses, no negative exponents, no repeated bases, and no whole numbers that can be simplified. So I selected some problems to go over with you. When we do this in class, I would let you guys select the ones that look hard. I'll do some problems with you in class on video, and then the rest is homework. So the first one that I selected was number two. So notice that we know that it's not simplified because I see 33 over 18 that can be simplified. I see repeated bases and I also see negative exponents. So I'm gonna start and something to notice is that you can do this in several different order. Um, exponents can be done in several different ways. I'll show you the way I do this. So I'm gonna start with this 33 over 18 that can be reduced. So if I divide by three, I end up with 11 on top and six on bottom. All I did was get rid of, reduce the 33 over 18. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move all of these negatives to get rid of them. So the x squared, again, I'm not done yet, this is just step one. I'm gonna leave the x squared there. This y to the third has a negative exponent, so I'm gonna put that in the denominator. By moving it to the denominator, it becomes a positive three. So I took care of both of these. On the bottom, I already took care of 18. I need to deal with both of these bases. X to the negative fifth has a negative. I'm gonna move it to the numerator position. Look what happened. That negative goes away. The Y, it also has a negative. So I'm gonna move it to the numerator position. So now all I did was reduce my whole numbers and I got rid of negative exponents. Now I still have work to do. So 11 over six stays. This is the same as the product of powers property. So I have the base written more than once, which means I add those exponents. So x to the second and x to the fifth gives me x to the seventh. These y's can be simplified. Remember, part of knowing that you're done is no bases being repeated. Notice that we still have y's here. So think about this and this as six y's in the numerator and three y's in the denominator. That's how I want you to think about this. These y's would cancel and I would have three y's left in the numerator position. If you wanna think about it, it technically is subtracting. However, I want you to be able to visualize why that happens. 
y to the sixth, that means there's six y's in the numerator, three in the denominator. When you cancel those out, you still have three in the numerator. Now, I know I'm done because 11 six can't be reduced. There's no parentheses, there's no negative bases, and there's no, re no negative exponents and no repeated bases. The next one that I wanna go over with you guys is number 12. So I'm gonna start by getting rid of these parentheses. Using my power of a power product, this negative one needs to be applied to both of these bases. So this says a to the second to the negative first. That means I'm gonna multiply. So a to the second to the negative first, when I multiply those exponents, I get a to the negative second. Those two got multiplied. Now I have b and I also have to do negative third to the negative first. When I multiply those, I get b to the third, negative three times negative one. Continuing on, we have a to the negative second to the negative fifth. Again, we're gonna multiply. This gives me a to the 10th. And then b just gets a negative five. There's nothing to multiply there. So my next step, I can do this a couple of different ways. I can get rid of my negative exponents, but I'm just gonna combine them first and see if that gets rid of my exponents. So we have our bases written more than once, which means I'm gonna add these exponents. So negative two plus 10 gives me eight. My b's I'm gonna combine, three plus negative five gives me negative two. So I have two steps here, but I'm still not done. Got rid of my, ex my negative exponents, no, I'm sorry, I got rid of my parentheses, and I combine like terms by multiplying. From here, I have to get rid of that negative exponent. So my last step, I'm gonna leave the a to the eighth in the numerator to make that negative two go away. It's currently in the numerator position, I'm gonna put it in the denominator position to get rid of that negative. So I know I'm done, there's no whole numbers to simplify, there's no parentheses, there's no negative exponents, there's no repeated bases. That's as simple as I can get. Let's flip to the back side. Looking at number 20, um, when you have parentheses like this, that means that this five applies to everything in those parentheses. So that five has to go to the A, the B, and the A in the denominator. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of those parentheses by applying that five to each base. Since it's a power of a power, this is a multiplication kind of problem. A to the eighth to the fifth becomes A to the 40th. B to the sixth to the fifth, remember the power's written, the base is written once, which means I'm gonna multiply. This is B to the 30th. And the denominator, A to the 11th to the fifth is A to the 55th. Be careful, a lot of people forget about that denominator because these parentheses are here, that five does apply to all of that. So now we have no negative exponents, no parentheses. I have a base written more than once. If you can imagine 40 A's in the numerator and 55 B's in the denominator, 40 of those would cancel out. So I have B to the 30th in the numerator. When I subtract that out, I would end up with A to the 15th in the denominator. I can't go any further because these are separate bases. No negative exponents, no whole numbers to simplify, no parentheses, and no repeated bases, so I know I'm done. I have one more I'm gonna go over with you. For this problem, this dot is not necessarily significant. So you can treat this as if all that stuff is on top and all the other stuff is on the bottom. So what I see is some things that I can clean up. What I'm gonna do is get rid of negative exponents and <clears throat> multiply. So the 5 and the 10, I can multiply and get 50. The 3 and the 8, I can multiply and I can get 24. The next thing I'm going to do is deal with all of my exponents. If it has a whole number, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm sorry, a positive number. If it has a negative exponent, then I'm going to move it. So x to the 6th, it has a positive exponent, it stays y to the negative fourth, I'm gonna move it to the denominator to get rid of that negative. 10 I've already dealt with. x to the seventh, I'm gonna keep it in the numerator because it has a positive exponent. y to the third, I'm keeping that in the numerator because it has a positive exponent. Moving to my denominator, x to the negative fourth, it has a negative exponent, so it's gonna get moved to the numerator. y to the negative first has a negative exponent, moving it to the numerator x squared stays because it's a positive exponent, y to the third gets moved to the numerator position. So now all I did was get rid of my negative exponents. Next thing I can do, I can do a couple of steps all at once. 50 over 24 can be reduced by dividing by two. 
Now what I'm gonna do is combine in the numerator position and then I'll combine numerator to denominator. So I see x to the sixth, x to the seventh, and x to the third. When I add those, numer those exponents, six plus seven gives me 13, plus four gives me 17. So I have x to the 17th by combining all three x's. When I combine my y's, again, I'm adding my exponents, y to the third, y to the third, and y to the first gives me y to the seventh. I'm gonna bring down everything else because I haven't finished. So you can see I'm slowly combining things so that I don't have any bases repeated, I don't have any negative exponents, um, getting to the point where I'm simplified as much as I can. So 25 twelfths, I have an x to the 17th in the numerator and x to the second in the denominator. If you can imagine 17 x's in the numerator and two x's in the denominator, those two x's will cancel out two of them in the numerator and I would have x to the 15th in the numerator. Seven y's and four y's, four of those y's will get simplified or get canceled out. So I would have y to the third in the numerator. And I know this is a little bit sloppy here. So I have 25 x to the 15th, y to the third over 12 is my simplified answer. 25 over 12 can't be simplified. I have no bases repeated. I have no negative exponents and I don't have any parentheses. I'll always go over any of the other problems that you have trouble with as you're doing for homework. Remember, you do have a quiz on this next block.